What up, friends? Friends and family in the building. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? We here for after hours. This is, man, it's kind of becoming a competition because like last week, my favorite show was after hours, but then I did the Millionaire Morning Show and I had a ball this morning. And then last night I was laughing my ass off on the Q show. So it's almost like everything is neck and neck. Everything is neck and neck as far as what our sentiment is. Loso way. What up? Your car, my guy. Mr. BX87, Nicole, what's going on? The Hamlock Report said another great show tonight. We don't know. We're going to see what happened. Daniel Berry Sports Highlights is in a building. Universal Trappers, what up, though? The, Fou uh, the Fouquery Ferry. Peter Investor in the building. Nicole, what up? Trini Life, what up, what up? A.R. Smitty, Glow Hardy, what up? Bitcoin Brown, Coke Show was fired, too. I know. Everything is just, man, we hitting on all cylinders. Everything feeling good right now. Blake Field says, what's good if you had a son? Would he have to leave at 18, like, buying the first car himself? No. Nah. I, I, would, I would give him freedom, but I wouldn't let him. I wouldn't let him leave at all. I would probably keep my son with me until, I, until he was, like, 30. That's a fact. I would keep my son with me till, till he, like, 30. Um, yeah, for sure. 100%. I would give him the freedom to do whatever it is that he want to do when he want to do it, but I wouldn't let him leave until he like thirty. I don't think that I don't think that men are really ready. Um, I don't think that men are really ready ready for the world until they like thirty years old. Most guys don't even think about getting themselves together till they like thirty years old. So like, even if you was to get married, I would still have you living with me because I think that your girl need to be trained up. And when I say trained up, that also means that I think that your girl needs to be up under or she needs to be assisted by or to witness what it's like to be up under a woman that knows how to treat a man. And so I think that we need to completely reinvent what our cultural norms are. A hundred percent. I 100 percent think that we need to um, reinvent what our cultural norms are. And there's no reason why a guy should leave the house before 30 years old, which then flies in the face of a lot of these women that say, well, I don't want to talk to a guy that don't have his own place. No, you don't want to talk to a guy that's not responsible. That's what you should be saying. So, you know, I, I wouldn't let I wouldn't have my, my son leave. Even if he was to get married, they would have to move in with me. <clears throat> They would definitely have to move in with me until they like 30 and we could just get a place. Like we can get one big place and all of that stuff. Um, I think that the way you treat your son and you treat your daughter is different, but I think that the foundation of allowing them to fail in a controlled environment is very, very important. You do not want the world to get a hold of your kids or too early. Let me say that again. You do not want the world to get a hold of your kids too early. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you don't want them to have they come to look, man, everybody walking around with fucking diseases. Everybody got AIDS. Everybody got herpes. Um, people be having baby mamas all of a sudden. They got a bunch of debt. They got a student loans and all of that. I'm telling you, you do not want your kid to be out there in the fucking streets before they're 30 years old. They not ready. The world will chew you the fuck up and spit you out. Look, for every one of us that's sitting here having this conversation, we're going to get into the show in a minute. 30 at home, you're going to be stunted mentally. No, you're going to be fucking successful. Look, we still in fucking last place. How are we going to sit here and say what we, what we should be when we got it all wrong? Everything that we've ever been taught is wrong. How are you going to say that when we got a method for success is literally being implemented in our family? And so the thing about it is just that for every one of us that's sitting here having this conversation right now, we know a bunch of other people that did not make it. 
We know people that's in jail. We know people that didn't crash the fuck out. We know people that's out here living foul. We know people that's out here with AIDS. We know people that didn't kill people. Look, every single day y'all y'all drive by somebody or y'all walk past somebody and they probably a fucking murderer, and that's a fact. So if we sitting here talking about what make you feel good, then no, absolutely not. For what? What are y'all trying to push them out so early for? At 30 years old, they got another 50 to 60 years to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Jesus himself didn't even start preaching until he was in his 30s. 30 is the magical number for a person that is ready to then take on the world. Other than that, in your 20s, you fucking up. 20s is fuck up season. 20s is fuck up season. So why y'all so busy trying to push y'all kids out too early? Why y'all trying to have them out there in the street so they can have, because then what, you know what happens? Then your, then your kids come back to you with a kid out of wedlock and then you got to be papa too early and you got to be mama, uh, grandmama too early. Then you got to be babysitting because she got to try to go to work and figure her fucking life out. You want them out there too early getting pregnant and bringing kids home and on child support? Or you want them to get themselves together and be prepared and to be trained up in a way that they're supposed to be trained up so that they can go out there and be a good reflection of you? You want them to come home and bring a kid home talking about, I gotta, I'm dealing with my baby daddy? Or you want them to fucking go out there and do it the right way? Because every single woman nowadays is out there bringing home a fucking kid to their to they parents, talking about, I need you to help me raise my kid. And then now the parents got to live in their twilight years raising your fucking daughter because you got to go to work. For what? What you trying to push them out there too early for? So they can have some freedom, so they can go out there to these, these indoctrination camps called college and fuck off and mess up all of the money? I don't know why y'all so in a rush to push these kids out the door. It's so stupid. It is the dumbest thing ever. It's so dumb. And for everyone that crashed out and came back, a lot of them didn't make it. And so y'all raised up a bunch of kids and now they foul. They foul as hell. Foul as hell. Stupid. Anyways, what up, y'all? What up, what up, what up, what up, friends and family? Y'all ready to get started with the show? I'm sorry. You know me. I'll be going off on my little rants because it's after hours and we can say whatever we want to say. Um... We got a lot to address today. We got to address Monique. I told y'all. I told y'all. Y'all like the view? Y'all like the city? That's actually Jefferson right there. So that's Jefferson. And then the first street that's going like this, that's Woodward Avenue. Woodward Avenue is the very first paved street in the, in the entire country. Um, Woodward Avenue, that's Jefferson right there. That's the Renaissance Center. That's GM, GM's headquarters right there. Uh, all of Detroit, DTE, MGM Grand, Motor City, all of Detroit is all behind me. So I got the city on my back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, new studio looking. Man. This ain't no studio. This is my new, uh, it's my new uh, penthouse in Detroit. Brand new building just built. Shout out to y'all. Brandon Beecham says, Anton, your idea sounds good, but the concept assumes parents know better than a child as kids raising kids out here. No, the parents do know better than a child. That's why I have, that's why I have three brothers, all successful, nine uncles, all successful. Listen, my, my family is a reflection of the success. So I'm telling you it works. I'm telling you it works. It absolutely works. We need to change our cultural norms. <laughs> Greg, that's why I'm living in a penthouse, and you can go and get your own with a floor plan that more or less fits your or suits what it is that's best for you. I love my floor. I love my open air. I love everything that's in here. I, I love the look of it. I still got my couch. My fucking guide, I was supposed to come and hang up the, the thing. Look at my TV still over there looking stupid. You know what I'm saying? I got my 85-inch TV still on the floor because the fucking man was supposed to come over here and hang my shit, and he stood me up. I hired him off a of task rabbit. He had the highest ratings, and the dude never showed up. So shout out to you, fuckface, for not showing up and doing your job. You know what I'm saying? 
don't like him. But anyway, shout out to everybody that's actually doing their job and getting to the money. All right, so let's get into, I'm going to let y'all, well, no, I know what I'm going to talk about. First thing I'm going to get into is Monique. Monique, Monique, Monique. You shouldn't throw stones if you live in a glass house. You should watch your mouth because I break your face. Ain't that 50? How your ass running talking to the Jakes? You're fucking with me, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I feel you, Greg. It ain't no hate. I didn't think that you was hating at all. Reloaded. You ain't never just think about life and shed a tear. Absolutely. Look, before I get into this Monique conversation, let me tell you, man. I wake up in the morning and I am absolutely ecstatic. Shout out to Charles Pride. I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, I can't believe I manifested this shit. I can't believe I manifested what my life is today. If, if, listen, no matter what I won, no matter what happens tomorrow, I won. You know what I'm saying? I won at life. And every single, anything that you can think of, I won. I am not supposed to be here based off of the statistics. They saying that. I'm not, I was, they told me that I wasn't going to make it to 18. They told me I wasn't going to make it to 21. I fucking won. And every cat, that's why I listen. I'm, I'm living, I'm playing with house money right now. I'm playing with house money right now because regardless of what happened, I'm up. I won in life. I've lived fucking three, four lifetimes. My life is awesome. My daughter took her driver's test the other day. And she passed that shit with fine. Uh, she took it today. No, yesterday. She took her driver's test yesterday. And so she she good to go. She got her new car. Her college is funded. I'm fucking in a penthouse. I own. It's about to be 18 properties. Once this one is built, we already done broke ground on the third one. We designed in the fourth one. No mortgages, no debt. My whole family is fucking straight and taken care of. My mom is good. We got millions of dollars in assets. We fucking won. We fucking won in every single thing, bro. There is nothing that anybody can tell me at this point because I won. And we did it without going to jail. We did it without selling a drug. We did it, did it without fucking taking somebody's credit card or scamming somebody. We just straight up won. And, every, and don't tell me that God ain't the greatest. God is the greatest of all time. Don't tell me that God ain't the greatest. God is the greatest of all time time i love god i love you know every single thing every single day of my life the first thing that i do when i wake up and i and i realize that i got another day and i look out the i look out of my window in my bedroom and i see fucking the whole city and i'm over i got the best the the top price point i'm the top dog in the whole fucking city there's nobody that got a better view than me i overlook canada on that side I overlook Canada on that side, and then I overlook the city on this side, and I never had to leave my city to do, do it. The first thing I say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for another day and another opportunity to A, praise your name, and B, execute and manifest greatness as a result of whatever it is that you give me and task me to do. I will go willingly. Without any kind of reservation, I will go willingly and do whatever it is that you want me to do, God. Because you have been so awesome. You have been so great to me. And no matter what happens, I will always praise God because God is the greatest of all time. I don't care what these gangsters are saying to you. We're going to get into the show, but let me just praise my God for one second. Because y'all want to praise the devil. Y'all sit here. Y'all praise uh, Playboy Cardi, y'all let him come in with, with Playtex masks on, and anybody can say and do whatever. Y'all sit here and let these people throw signs and devil worship signs. Let me give the opportunity to just say God is the greatest of all time, Then there is nothing that you can ever do or say to me that will convince me otherwise. I will never turn my back on God. No matter who it is that say something about it, no matter what my life turns into, it don't matter if I lose everything tomorrow, I have lived 
the life of a king, and I am absolutely, positively, 100% ecstatic because I have the greatest life that any man could ever want in his entire lifetime. My life is awesome. And then I got the stuff to go with it. I got people that love me, people that want to see me win. I got my chasers in here. Tell me that God ain't great, that God ain't faithful, that God ain't a, a God of his word, that he absolutely is 100% going to take care of his. I'm a witness to it. I'm a witness to it. So that's all I'm going to say. Listen, I shed a tear every day. I'm thankful. I'm 100% thankful. I don't take anything that is going on in my life for granted. I am 100% thankful. I praise God every single day. My Lord, my Savior, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit of God gives utterance, you can't tell me nothing about my Jesus. Nothing. Not one thing. I don't care what nobody say. And I will openly, always openly praise my God because it is the greatest thing ever for me. That's just my thing. That's my story. That's my testimony. I'm sticking to it, and I don't care what these people say out here in the streets. They want to try to suppress you and say that you can't praise God. I ain't with it. You can't tell me nothing. You can't. God didn't had his hand over my life and protected me my entire life. You can't tell me nothing about God. Nothing. At all. So that's what I stand on. That's what I'm about. And if that bothers you, then, then I'm sure you can find somewhere else to go. But in the meantime, we got to hold Monique accountable. Uh, let me read one more super chat, and then I'm going to get to it. Uh, EJ9959 says, anyone talk about the Black College Expo event? I don't know nothing about it. You got to tell me about it, big dog. I don't know nothing about it. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for supporting the platform. I appreciate you. Um, let's get to it. A shout out to everybody that's in the chat that love and, and support. And do what we do. We disagree, but we always come back to the front of the congregation and we love on each other. Shout out to the chasers. All right, let's get to it. So Monique, y'all. Now listen, listen. I've been telling y'all about Monique for the longest. I've been telling y'all about Monique for the longest. And when everybody was sitting here talking about how awesome she is, when everybody was sitting here talking about how awesome she is and just because she get on there and say, my baby, hey, babies, hey, babies. And she was say, hey, remember when she was talking about D.O. Hughley and the role that he played in his daughter's lives and his kids and how his dog shouldn't even fuck with him because he a trash parent and all of this? Remember when. Remember when, over the last year and a half, she been talking shit. She got something to say about every single person, about how they did them wrong. Well, guess what? The person that decided to step up, aside from D.O. Hughley, and say, you know what, Monique actually is not the person that y'all thought that she was. Now, I have not watched this yet because I want to react to it in real time. I have not watched this yet, but I, I want to react to it in real time. But let's talk about it. So her son, of all people, listen, you got to be a shit-faced person for your very son, your son, your son to come and expose you. Of all people, it wasn't a producer, it wasn't another comedian, it wasn't Cat Williams, it wasn't, wasn't D.L. Hughley, the Listen, you can't throw stones if you live in a glass house. You got to fix your own backyard before you can start talking about how everybody else is doing everything to everybody. Because when you least expect it, it's always going to be the very person that you did the dirtiest that's going to come and bring your punk ass to the front of the congregation. And I told y'all, I told y'all, y'all was over here talking about how she the savior and all of this shit. OK, well, let's get into it and see what her son had to say. Let me see. I'm going to fast forward it because I know that this has got a little bit of stuff. I want to get straight to the to the meat and potatoes. I am a stand-up comedian, Monique's oldest son. Um, I guess I 
felt the need to make this video to just provide some context into this false narrative about her praying to the universe in order to reconcile our relationship or whatever the hell it is. Um, I wrote it all down so that way I don't go all over the place and get emotional or anything like that. I can, so I'm going to talk like I'm reading a script, but it's just going to help me kind of stay together. Um, but uh, to address the uh, Club Cheche interview that she did where she states that she prays to the universe in regards to reconciling our relationship, as I stated, um, is odd. Uh, my mother and I both know that that is a very false narrative and I would like to free her of having to continue telling that lie. Before you start holding everybody else accountable, you have to get the beam out of thine own eye. Before you start trying to free Oprah and Tyler Perry and, 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 and Steve Harvey and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish and and, and The Breakfast Club and, and every single producer and Netflix and the whole world is against you. The whole world is against you. Before you start trying to free everybody else, your son, your flesh and blood, the person that came out of your fat coochie is coming on the live and saying, I'm going to free you of yourself. No longer are you going to have to burden yourself with the lies that you tell to the general public as though you are a saint when you are a sinner. Faith without work is dead. Woo. Neither one of us cares to put forth any effort to reconcile with the other. Uh, we are separate, as she put it, because she doesn't care to be my mother any more than I care to be her son. Neither one of us uh, has had the desire to reach out to the other in a very long time and I don't think that either of us anticipates that feeling ever returning. You know it, Peter. My mother directly, in my experience, will either lead to some odd newfound moment of clarity in regards to how she was as my mother, or she retreats back to daddy to move forward with a conversation. And I'm tired of hearing my mother's truths. Um, newsflash, I'm not sure if people know, but sting it, standing in your truth doesn't make you noble. Um, I'm not sure if people are aware of that. Uh, but responding this way, I feel as though it allows me to say my piece uninterrupted um, to those wondering, well, why say something now? Mm, call it a form of therapy for me, I suppose. Um, but when her daddy had intentionally state, stated that they have three sons, but his wife is on the Internet talking about the fourth son in a video that has millions of views that rubbed me the wrong way Ooh. he said listen i i've been watching you for a long time mama as you continue to refer to your daddy i've been watching you for a long time mama and it wasn't until you said something that just absolutely triggered me that forced me to start to bring you to the front of the congregation. And see, I got to get this man some credit. He's been quiet for a long time. He hasn't exposed her. He's been chilling. But she's continuing to volunteer lies to y'all. And because y'all so smitten with the fact that she going to take somebody down or she going to expose somebody, I want the same people that had the same enthusiasm that she had for everybody else to give her that same energy back. Listen, all of that, that lying and that, hey, sugars, hey, my little babies. Did she talk to her son like that? Was she there for her son like that? Was he one of her little babies? Now, why would she have so much love for y'all and fixing a community when she can't even fix the relationship that she got with her own son? Why would she be holding everybody else accountable? And all of them, almost all of them tend to be men, but she's not holding her own self accountable because the first way that you fix something is by cleaning up your own backyard. Don't sit here and tell everybody else how it is that they need to get their property together and yours is the worst one on the block. You ain't even got a relationship with the very person that came out of your coochie. And you sitting here holding other people accountable? Really? And he's freeing you from the lie. He's finally letting you get your rocks off. And don't worry, I'm going to play that response because I ain't seen that either. I save everything for after hours. 
hours. I save everything for after hours. Um, but anyway, to inform a child that you no, are no, 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 you missing it. Cash flow hustles. It's not that she's admitted that her and her estranged son or her and her son have an estranged relationship. It's why you ain't fucking fixed it, but you keep trying to force everybody else to apologize to you, and they don't even have no relationship with you. I don't give a fuck if you got an estranged son just because you admit it. That don't make it right. So you admitted that you knocked another nigga upside the head, but that don't mean that you right. Fix that shit. The only way that you can really hold somebody else accountable is by holding yourself accountable first. Don't matter if you admitted it. What's that? What? Wait, why do y'all think that just because somebody admits something that they deserve a cookie? So what y'all want, a cookie? You want to feel good about that? That don't mean shit to me. Fix that shit. Talking about, oh, oh, I'm admitting it. No, fix it. Interested in being a mother at a time when that kid is the only kid that has the potential to lead a child to believe that you are not interested in them specifically uh but to take it a step further take it further big dog so admit my mother had also admitted to me that she didn't do the best job that she could do um which would also make one begin to question you know all of your past decisions and prior emotional interactions but to be completely honest and fair um Facts are true. You know, those were things that I was willing to get over. You know, nobody's perfect. We're all human. But my mother showed a clear lack of humility, compassion, and consideration when taking any level of accountability for those things. Um, my mother does a fantastic job of acknowledging a lot of things, but she doesn't take accountability very well. And anything that she may take true accountability for, it's only at her convenience. Uh, Oh, so she's just like every other modern woman. She has no problem forcing you to take accountability for your actions, but her kryptonite is taking accountability for her. So when you hold her accountable, listen, at no point have I ever heard Monique say, I'm a fuck up. Even when she was admitting on Club Shay Shay that she was out here sexing and being a whore, she didn't even fully admit that she was a whore. She said, I almost got there. And then my daddy said, oh, no, mama, you wasn't a whore. You was just temporary community pussy or some dumb shit like that. It's because she employed him. She got to make sure that he got a job. Of course, that nigga going to tell her whatever it is that she because you can't hold nobody accountable if you're not bringing in no bread as a man. It's difficult for you to hold somebody. How you going to hold the breadwinner accountable if you a man? How you going to hold the breadwinner accountable? At no point in her life has she ever really been brought to the front of the congregation. And that's why people don't fuck with her. In my experience. Um, but if I had to guess, though, her interest in being a mother probably started around the time that she married her daddy and had his children. Um, but that interest, you know obviously seemed one-sided and as it should have been um by that time i'm in my late teens so to some degree the <laughs> excuse me the neglect becomes easier to hide or validate i guess you could say there are now two baby boys in the house you know that require attention um but still during that time however i still watched her enjoy the love and admiration of total strangers more than my own uh, to this very day, my mother has never expressed to me when, if ever, um, she became interested in me as her son. That did lead me down a path of questioning my self-worth and struggling to understand the value of a mother and a child. At no point, this man said that, listen, just because you admit that y'all got in a strange relationship doesn't mean that you've ever made it right or you ever asked for forgiveness from the very person that didn't even ask to be here. At no point, he says... Did she ever, ever express any interest in being a mother to this man? The absolute worst thing that you can be for the community. Child's life. What up, Messi? In the interview. What up, Messi? I'm my baby. What up, Messi? She also states that she gave me an apology. 
but an apology to a son from a mother that consciously showed no interest in him holds no weight. Um, there are still women to this day uh, that my mother will give credit to for being more of a mother to me than she ever could. Her assistant, my cousin, being one of them. Um, every time though that my mother would state that she was right here whenever I was ready, um, that ideology still blows my mind today that a person could openly admit to being an uninterested, not put my best foot forward type of parent and be so self-centered that they still express to the kid, you have to come to me when you're ready. You got to come to me for- That's wild. That's wild. So it's your fault that I feel abandoned, but then I'll be ready to kick it with you when you're ready for me. How come y'all not hold Monique to the same standard that y'all hold men? She should have fought for being his life. She should have fought, and it was no barrier to entry. Men get held to the standards that men get held to an accountability regardless of whether or not you actually, you could die on a cross trying to get to your kid and you should have fought harder. But for her, it's, you know what? I kick it with you when you ready. Not her seeking insight, in information, forgiveness, taking accountability, trying to make it right, building a new relationship. This man is clearly, clearly expressing his interest in having some kind of closure or at least some semblance of a relationship that he always longed for. And she can go on Club Shay Shay and call up Cat Williams. See that brother? Use that nigga. That's what she said on the, on the stage, right? But she can't call her own son because he got to reach out to her, not the other way around. She went out of her way to get in touch with, with Tyler Perry, Cat Williams, Kevin Hart's assistant. Steve Harvey, Club Shay Shay, Tiffany Haddish, Gail King, Charlemagne from The Breakfast Club. Who the fuck knows? But she, she can't make one phone call to her own son? Okay. I want to see how much y'all really, really hold her down and how much she's right about this one. For us to I, think that, I think that she's a piece of shit. I think that everything that y'all see her doing is a finesse. She finessed Netflix. They got the bad end of the deal. She finessed every fucking body that she's ever been in a relationship with as far as from a business perspective. And now she's out here finessing y'all and the general public of, of y'all sentiments. And y'all really, really is going for it. Apparently, she's creating some kind of documentary called Boo. Is that what she said? I wonder if she's in it. I wonder if her son can do the, do the, do the opening monologue. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm not sure what my mother could possibly think that she has shown me in the past or have for me now that's not money, goodness gracious, that would make me want to come to her or, or whatever, that, whatever those feelings are supposed to be. Um, a mother is supposed to be the first woman that a boy falls in love with. Uh, I loved my mother very much. Uh, but my mother loved things more than she loved me. And she would validate her love for me by giving me things and would proceed to call me ungrateful or inconsiderate if said things did not have the desired effect. Um, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be her though, uh, to ask God for what you want. And then he gives you what you need though, only for you to ignore it and have the audacity to ask God for something else. And um, I'm glad I don't, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, and when he told you no, uh, you went to the universe instead. Um, by no means, though, do I want to give off any type of an impression that I am a victim of, of anything. Um, I, that is not the case. As you can see, I'm smiling from ear to ear. Um, I'm alive. I'm happy. I'm a dad. Um, I'm healthy, I think. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I'm getting over a cold now. Um, you know, I still have my days just like everybody else. And, you know, there were a few things that she did teach me along the way. Uh, I did learn how not to love Ooh. from my mother. Um, I also <laughs> he 
said, listen, I learned what not to do. I learned what not to do. And you know what the unfortunate part about this is? You know what the unfortunate part about this is? Because we're not going to victim blame here. We're not going to victim shame the same way that we give grace to the victims of that happened in any other circumstance is the same way that we're going to give grace to this young man because I don't think that men have largely had the platforms to express themselves freely and now we finally have the ability to do so and we need to stand with this brother because he's been wronged. He's been wronged by a, a narcissistic, evil, victim-blaming, want to see some kind of validation from somebody that they call daddy. All right? He's, he's the victim here. He's not the person that we need to be holding accountable. He's the victim. And so he's not speaking out of anger. He's, he's, he's taking accountability. He said, listen, I'm not a victim. He said, I'm not a victim. I'm doing well. I'm a father. I'm happy. I'm healthy. And you know what most men should tend to do is that they don't continue to extend the same anger that was extended to them over into their child. They then do better. They say, you know what, you did me dirty, but everything that you didn't give me, I'm going to give to this kid. And they overlove the kid and they overcompensate sometimes, even to the detriment of the kid, because of the way that they was raised by their mother. Yeah, yeah. I learned to make sure that I never lose so much of who I am that I have to validate it through another person. Um, and though I feel as though, you know, in hindsight, you know, I think she did it reluctantly. I do appreciate my mother, you know, for showing me what the top of the mountain looks like. You know what I'm saying? It did give me perspective on what hard work and dedication can get you, but I don't want something like that at the cost of giving up something that I created. I'm not, I don't want it, I don't want it that bad. And speaking of creations, I genuinely, truly, I really did want my mother to have a relationship with my daughter. Um, I even fought through those intrusive thoughts that were, if she wasn't interested in you, what makes you think she's going to be interested in your kid? Oh, um, that hurts. But that it took my mother no time at all to prove that those intrusive thoughts were correct. Um, but what I can say, good for her, the universe did, uh, you know, bless her with three other sons, bless her with three other sons, and God willing, um, you know, I'm sure that one of them, all three of them are adults now, so I'm sure that all, you know, one of them, God willing, if not all three of them, will make her the grandmother that she wants to be. Um, That's messed up. I'm, I look for, I still look forward, you know, to that moment for her, um, but overall, when it comes to the boys, though, uh, I am happy that whenever they do hear me talk, sorry, my phone did something weird, but no, but whenever they hear me talk, um, they don't know what it is. They can't, they can't relate to what it is that I'm saying. My experience with my mother is not their experience, um, with our mother. Uh, so my prayer for her and them is that they continue to see her the way that they see her now. Um, I do also want to make sure that I say thank you to my mother for giving me life. Without that moment in time, I wouldn't have had my little one. But outside of that moment, there isn't anything that either of us that either of us has to offer the other. Um, in my opinion, it's a waste of God's time and the universe's time for praying for something that you were not willing to put forth any effort to obtain. Uh, putting the work into becoming Monique is more important to my mother than being my mother. And I do not believe that it was it was never about her being there and waiting for me, but it was supposed to be about me being there and waiting for her. Um, my mother's value had reached such a low point in my life that I no longer found it necessary to either want to wait for her or even go to her. Um, but like I said, man, I'm super grateful that she has the opportunity to do it all over again. You know, I'm happy for her. I hope the Cat Williams tour goes well, but you know, the narrative that she prays for us to reconcile is a false narrative. It's Oh, call a spade a spade. Call a mother F and spade a spade. Call it what it is and address it accordingly. Don't sit here and pity pat here. Don't finesse us. Don't throw us all of this fakeness and act like that you on top of it and all of that. We gonna address it for what it is. And you out here finessing the people in order to go on tour with Cat Williams. But your house, your house is not in order. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate.
Mm-mm-mm. Let me hear what this man got to say. It's not real, not appreciated if she stopped saying stuff like that. All right, you guys, so I feel... Wow. Wow. So what do we have to say about that now? I just want to know if y'all still standing on business. I just want to know if y'all still standing on business. Y'all still rolling with her? Y'all still rocking with her? Y'all still consider her y'all queen? She's your queen to be. She's your queen to be. Let me see if I can find out. Let me see if I can find a response. I got to find a response now. I want to see how she how she made this right because every time she get on stage, it's a nigga, nigga, this and a nigga, nigga, that, and that, and I can't believe that motherfucker. And then she get on a she get on a live and she be like, my babies, my babies, oh sweetness, child, she's your. Queen to be. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Her and her daddy, I don't even know this nigga's name, is responding. Let me see what y'all got to say. What up, Dub? What top? W Top X? W Topics, you on the live. What's going on? Got to unmute yourself. W top X going once. W top X going twice. Gotta let you go, big dog. All right, let's get into this. The title of our conversation, because ain't no shortcuts. Pickles, stop playing with that paper, please. The reason we're having it is a multitude of reasons, but we're going to start off with there was a Instagram that was he would have done. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me back this up because uh, I don't like all of that. I don't need no. I don't need none of that. I just want to get straight to the thick of things. I don't want no music, no extra promotion. Let's get back to the. Let's see if I can find a better copy of this shit. Okay, so we can have this conversation. You would do that right now. Okay. Conversation with our community. What is that? Oh, we could. Let's rock and roll, baby. Let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. The title of our. They are so fake to me. I'm going to just be Before we even get into this response video. They are so fake to me. Like, 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 you know, the, like the energy just don't be right when you can tell somebody is really playing a role. Like somebody said it in the chat. Somebody said, listen, she played herself and that's why she won an Academy Award for Precious. Our conversation or the theme of it is called the long way around because ain't no shortcuts. Pickles. The reason we're having it is a multitude of reasons, but we're going to start off with there was a Instagram that was put up, or I guess. It was TikTok, baby. TikTok that was put up by. My son. My are, they the, are they the locks? Jada Kiss and Styles P with a little bit of chic on the side? Why are they fucking trying to finish each, each other's sentences? Bye. <laughs> My oldest son, Shalom. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Say it. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me, I was crazy, I was deranged, we watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. That's your response? And I do want to address this, though, Shalon. 
When you say her daddy, her daddy, then that's when mommy gonna say stop playing because you know this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Uncle Sid knew you before you knew you. So for you to say her three sons, yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid and he knows your daddy very well. And love that brother. And the irony of all of this is not what is said, but what's left off. Yes. See, you're, you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you, your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago. You're forgetting about how I, from Georgia, am talking. Hoppo, who is this nigga talking to me? Hoppo, who is this nigga talking to me? I'm talking to my mama. Why is this bald-headed nigga talking to me when I'm having a heart-to-heart -heart with my mom? Somebody get this nigga off my screen. Why is he talking when I'm having a heart to heart talking about my mother's mothering skills? I don't want to talk to a nigga who you married to. You calling him Uncle Sid? I don't know this nigga. This nigga ain't my daddy. I want to know who what you talking about as a mama. The fuck is wrong with y'all people? Am I the only person that got some sense in this world? Dog, the first thing I would say is, man, who is this nigga talking to me, bro? I'm a grown man. I ain't even talking to you. I ain't even make no something, nothing addressing you. Man, I don't know you, nigga. What you talking about? You got some stuff for the baby. Nigga, I'm talking about my whole life. Step baby daddy ass nigga sitting here talking to me on a live stream. And pick up the fucking phone. What y'all talking to me on a live stream for? Pick up the phone. What you talking to me on a live stream for? Because you doing it for the gram the same way that all the rest of these motherfuckers is doing. You doing it for your reputation. You not doing it to fix the relationship with the kid. You doing it to... Man, who is this nigga and what is his talent and why is he talking on a live stream in the first place? Man, who paying money to come and see this? Whoever, what is this nigga's name? What is his name? Somebody in the chat tell me what his name is. What does he do for a living? And why are we always hearing from him like he a content creator? Somebody in the chat tell me his name so I can... Because I'm not calling him daddy. That's a fact, though. I'm not calling him daddy. Y'all can call him that shit. I'm not calling him daddy. What's his name? Somebody say his name in the chat. Sydney. Blake Fields. Shout out to Blake Fields. Man, somebody tell Sydney to stop talking, bro. I don't want to hear what he got to say. What you talking about? You bought some diapers. I don't want to hear about no diapers, nigga. I want to hear from my mama. I just had a heart to heart. I'm looking for a phone call. What the fuck y'all on an Instagram live for? Trying to save your reputation. You through getting your car after we gave you the half of the down payment for it. And you were 31 years of age, 32 years of age at that point. And I'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there. And you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother. These are the things that you're leaving out when you're expressing. Man, me and that nigga will have to square up, bro. Straight up. If I was Shalom, Shalom and Sydney need to have a heart to heart, nigga. Like, dog, what the fuck you talking to me for, bro? And now they want to throw my business out there in the street, nigga, because I had a heart to heart and said that I'm tired of you not really. Man, fuck you, bro. What you're expressing in reference to your mother, you're not expressing the relationship that you have 
with your father where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father... Now we got a step-baby daddy-ass nigga talking about my father. Nigga, how do you know I ain't already talked to my father? You don't know what I got going on. We got a step-baby daddy-ass nigga inserting himself into a conversation that ain't even for him. Family, dog, this is why I keep telling y'all, bro, it's, it never pays to be a step-baby daddy. Because all you doing is inserting yourself into business that you're not supposed to be in. It never pays to be a stepbaby daddy. Flat out. And I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. The one thing these individuals and to the individuals out here that oftentimes speak after they've heard one side of the story, there's an old saying, believe half of what you see and none of what it is that you hear. Please don't take our word for it, but what we will convey is this. Those who are parents and have- So my nigga, you telling me at 31 that y'all helping me negotiate a deal with a dealer and giving me half of a down payment is supposed to substitute for your ability to be a loving mother for the for your whole life raise their parents up to being adults their children raise their children up to being adults right on <laughs> <laughs> those who are parents that raise their children Chicken. into yeah. adulthood know that there comes a time and a place in which they determine their own decisions their own path you can have multiple children that multiple children that are raised in one house, but they act and they take on different things. The reason why it was so important for us to entertain these conversations that we and never mind the fact that if you really start to put the context clues, listen, listen, family, listen, family, let's put the context clues in, in, in perspective. I want y'all to re re realize this, right? When she was on Club Shay Shay, she said that. This dude right here was in the picture the entire time when she was in her other relationships. That means, hey, Shalom, hey, come holla at me, big dog. Come get that time, dog, from Anton from AntonDaniels.com. Nigga, that mean that this nigga right here, the step baby daddy, don't you realize that this dude was hanging around even when she was with your real daddy? This nigga was sitting in the background playing a smooth role, talking about, yeah, you don't need him. It's a strong possibility. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But let's just evaluate all possibilities because she said it. If she hadn't have said it, we, were, we wouldn't have even be having this conversation right now. She said that this nigga been playing in the friendship role the whole time, right? How you know that you wasn't even supposed to really be in a loving family? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. If she didn't say it, I wouldn't be having a conversation about it. How you know this nigga wasn't the one that was the manufacturer of the of the dissolution of what the fuck y'all had going on as a family in the first place? She said that this nigga was in the role. He was in the background playing his role the whole time. He was waiting, telling her that she was just giving up friendship pussy at the end of the at the end of the journey so he can get his management on. He said, listen, I'm going to manage you. I ain't got no management experience, but I'm going to manage you. How you know that this nigga wasn't a part of the, the whole shebang of what happened between your mama and your daddy in the first place? Nigga, you need to have a heart to heart. And Sid, nigga, why you keep hanging around the whole time? Nigga, you been around since 10th grade? If she hadn't have said it, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you right now. All I'm saying is it's a theory. It's a theory. Shalom, you a little too calm for me, big dog. Typically have privately or that we're influenced to have privately amongst the people in our community is because we need to stop being embarrassed about being human beings and about being black human beings. You will oftentimes want to make it a blackish. We are embarrassing ourselves in front of them. Who is them? Who are they? Because when you hear someone articulate these things, that is the slave's mentality that makes us believe that we as black people need to conduct our... When did this nigga become Malcolm X? What the fuck is he talking about? We not talking about black? Look, man, we on after hours. 
this ain't the Millionaire Morning Show. So we know that the church is doors is pews is closed. The daycares is shut down right now. It's nighttime everywhere for everybody that's watching this shit. When did this motherfucker become Malcolm X and how did this become a black issue? So was it a black issue when you was throwing everybody under the bus on Club Shay Shay? Or was it only a black issue when he decided to address you publicly when you was addressing everybody else publicly? When you was fucking recording conversations and releasing it to the public, it wasn't a black issue. When did this motherfucker become Malcolm X? Who is we? Nigga, I don't know you. Nigga, why you keep hanging around? Dog, this is, a, this is a public service announcement for every person that's watching this right now. Because there's thousands of y'all in here that's watching this right now on multiple different platforms. Public service announcement. Any nigga that you see hanging around and your girl keep calling him unk, keep trying to make the kids call him unk, she fucking that nigga, man. That's a fact, though. Or he think it, he trying to fuck her and she ain't gave it up to pussy yet. Any nigga that's hanging around keep talking about Unk. That nigga is, is plotting, bro. Oh, this is your uncle, Uncle Sidney. Looking at that nigga like, what you doing here, fam? So you just friendly for no reason? So you just a friendly nigga. You just a friend of the family. No relation. Didn't bring no food. You just appeared out of nowhere, huh? And we supposed to call you Unc? Uncle C it with a C? Man, this nigga is plotting on my mama, fam. Why you keep telling me to call this nigga Uncle? Public service announcement, nigga. For all of you dudes that's sitting here and the girl keep telling him to call him Unc, that nigga is fucking her or he at least is, is plotting and trying to. I'm not calling this nigga uncle. He fucking you. He fucked your mouth off. What you talking about? This nigga loving on you and he finessing you out of your money. This nigga pimping you. What you mean call him uncle? You know who this nigga is? This nigga's Chauncey and dead presidents. Keep talking about I took care of your lady when you was off at the war. He's Chauncey. You, you, you. <laughs> you Lorenz Tate, nigga. He Chauncey. That nigga gonna hit you in the head with the gun if you ungrateful. Because he taught your girl some things that you ain't never seen before. Y'all ain't never seen dead presidents? Nigga's Chauncey. That's all this nigga is, is Chauncey. He's starting to look like Chauncey. Nigga keep talking in the camera. Nigga, I'm talking to my mama. Let me get to, let me get to what he says with dignity because white people are watching. You should conduct yourself with dignity because the spirit of you is watching. Come on. But we need to have these conversations out loud and taboo because we have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity with the spirit that you have all alone and you will not remember. This nigga got infinity stones now, huh? You Thanos. Oh, let me guess. You Ant-Man. Quantum Leap. This nigga's talking about traveling through infinity. Oh, nigga, you Buzz Lightyear, huh? You Buzz? Toy Story-ass nigga? This nigga talking about traveling to infinity and beyond. I don't even know what this nigga's saying no more. I'm a C student. Nigga, talk to me like I'm a child. This nigga talking about traveling to infinity and beyond. What is he talking about? Nigga, I said that my mama didn't love me when I was younger. This nigga saying talk, talking out loud to infinity and beyond. Nigga, you Buzz Lightyear? You got the, you got the, you got the soul stone, nigga? What the fuck is you talking about, bro? I don't know what this nigga is talking about. This nigga said to infinity. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this nigga's just just rambling. He's talking about literally nothing. Did y'all hear what this nigga said? Let me rewind this real quick. I, you can't make this shit up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This nigga said to infinity. Night period of time together, loud and taboo, because we 
have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity. This nigga's Jonathan Majors now. <laughs> Nigga, you Loki? <laughs> What is this nigga? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> niggas be thinking that they intelligent as hell. Yo, this nigga remind me of the niggas that was, uh, that used to be talking to you back when Wu-Tang first came out, nigga. And they used to be talking about, uh, they used to wear wallabies. Yo, God, we got once. I got this. <laughs> we in our third eye. We got to see out of our third eye because the enemy coming from the south side. Like, nigga, shut the fuck up, bro. I'm just trying to go to school and get my grades up because I'm trying to get into college, nigga. With the spirit that you have all alone, and you will not remember the ridicule that you receive, but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the rest of your life which way that you go as you have thus far. This nigga's freestyling. Yo, this nigga's freestyling with no rhymes. He's... <laughs> Nigga, I'm not... Dog, I see niggas do this in an interview all the time. You ask them a question, they know they don't know the answer, and this nigga start free... This nigga's freestyling. He's on here freestyling, and she's nodding in agreement. This nigga don't even know what he's going to say before he say it. Listen to what he's saying. In real time, he's free... He's look, look at this. Look at this nigga looking up and talking. He's making it up as he goes... And he's freestyling. I cannot believe that I'm watching a nigga freestyle an answer that has no relevance to the conversation that we having right now. Listen to this nigga. It's out loud and taboo because we have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity with the spirit that you have all alone and you will not remember the ridicule that you receive but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the rest of your life, but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the... <laughs> you will, what? What are you going to be doing? You receive, but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the rest of your life which way that you go as you have thus far. What the fuck are we talking about? What is this shit? What is this shit that we're listening to? This nigga said you will be traveling to infinity and beyond determining thus far what you have done is going in whatever direction you have gone in. I said this nigga is, this nigga's insane. He's literally insane. This nigga's freestyling with no rhymes on a live stream and we supposed to take this shit as gospel. This nigga threw in the black community, half of a car payment, infinity soul stones, and then this nigga freestyled a Wu-Tang Clan verse. This nigga's Ghostface and Thanos at the same time. This nigga put in a half a car payment. Y'all not catching this, bro? Seriously. Seriously, y'all not catching this nigga? Nigga, you can't can't finesse me. Nigga, I done been around niggas like you before, huh? So this conversation is about speaking directly to what situations are. And many people oftentimes, when they are uh, presented with an issue, they stay quiet. They hide. They disappear. And what we're saying is that's not who we are because what you cannot do is you cannot trick an honest person. Come on. You can demean, you can say whatever you want to say about them negatively, but what will happen is truth has a way of standing the test of time. I, I, I forgot to have my, my phone to read the last text message that I gave to you, Shalom, where I told you, about the understanding of how you are speaking to a woman 
and how you as a man and how you perceive things may be completely different from how your wife, how your mother, how your sister, how your daughter will look at things. And when you learn how to communicate a little bit better, then things will happen a little bit better. We still ain't saw for why this nigga's talking to me in the first place, bro. Listen, I'm Shalom right now. And Shalika Shalom is, is saying, shout out to Shalika Shalom. Assalamu alaikum Shalom. Assalamu alaikum Shalom is still, if I'm Assalamu alaikum Shalom, I'm trying to figure out why is this nigga talking in the first place when I was having a conversation with my mama, nigga. I'm not yours, am I? The fuck is wrong with these people, man? Of the challenges that this young brother has had with mental illness. So we're communicating that out loud. Now I got mental to illness. To our community. To now say this nigga telling me that I'm mentally ill. Now this nigga telling me that I'm on a short bus. Okay. This nigga sneak dissing, freestyling at the same time. Hey, listen, y'all, if we have more public conversations, there will be less private angst. Come on. There will be less private issues that we carry on because we're afraid to communicate in front of white folks. So when we get to a place where you want to be free, you will stop being scared to say what's real. You'll stop being fearful of having conversations that normally take place in private and nobody ever really knows the outcome. And, and from but nigga, you just held D.L. Hughley accountable for what the fuck you assume happened and he had to correct you about what really happened with his own fucking family. You want to have all of these fucking public conversations, but then at the same time, you want to say, hey, man, we need to have this conversation in private. Nigga, you ain't reached out. You was a liar. You was a liar. You was a lying motherfucking liar. You was a L. A L waiting to happen. That's why don't nobody fuck with you. See, y'all keep thinking that it's the industry's fault. No, this motherfucker is a liar. Look at her. I'm looking at him and he looking at her and I'm looking at him and he looking at her and they foul. They foul as fuck and they, they sitting here talking shit about their own kid. One thing is for certain. Two things is for sure. You will never ever in my life sit here and have me going back and if my kid, man, listen, bro. From there, when you were saying earlier. I would be on fire. I would be on fire if I was him. He was just a little too calm for me because I would be on fire. Because who is this nigga talking to me in the first place? And secondly, about how we're looking, how we're looking, how we're looking in front of white folks. When I do hear our brother Greg Mathis say, the studio is watching y'all and the executives are watching y'all, so what? If the executives are watching closely, the individuals that would want to interact with us are those who are engaged are in, and are in alignment with what is true. Come on. See, the first question would not be, uh, Stephen A. Smith, why did you video someone? Or you won't entertain. Let me read so many super chats. These motherfuckers is crazy. Rural Black is in the building says, so basically they are proving the son's point that they are only providing... Man, they pro man, listen, take your little punk, take that little punk ass half of a car down payment and get that shit about my face. Take that little punk ass, get them little punk ass diapers, man. That's what you supposed to do. What you mean? My expectation is when my daughter get married, I'm going to have a whole house available for her. That's the shit that you supposed to do. That's doctrine. That's scripture. He said you're supposed to leave something for your kids. You're supposed to take care of your kids. But the thing that you're not supposed to do is try to substitute the stuff for it. That little punk-ass payment that they made, man, nobody give a fuck about that. 
we negotiated with the dealership for a half a payment for your man. Get that shit up out my face, man. Fuck your payment. He asking for your love. Shout out to you, Royal Black. I appreciate you. That's true though. Ar Smitty says he one of them. What's the math, niggas? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Miss Joy in the building says, shout out to the half a car payment niggas talking trash. Talking shit. With a Nike tech on. Show and tell. Shout out to show and tell for showing and telling and pulling up on us and dropping that 20 ball. We appreciate you because we got to do the Lord's work tonight. Uh, Kevin Hart is the biggest star in the world. She said that. Not only did she say that, not only when she spoke about Oprah and Tyler, these are individuals that you failed to hear that she said she loves them. And when you love folks, you tell them what they need to know, not what they want to hear. We've well, guess what? Your son loved you, and he told you what you need to know, and you just completely ignored it and hit him with the oop shebang freestyle. And nigga, he wasn't even talking to you. These niggas start talking about, dog, I thought that they were supposed to be having a conversation with their son. These niggas is talking about Kevin Hart, the studios, and Stephen A. Smith. How do we get here? How do we get here? How did we get to the point to where they talking about Stephen A. Smith, Kevin Hart, and the studios when they're supposed to be addressing their son? Well, I'm sorry. He just a step daddy, step baby daddy ass nigga. When Monique is supposed to be addressing her son, show and tell. What you need to what you need to contact me for? What's happening? We've put certain individuals in such a status that we've disallowed them to be human beings. And on the note, we've taken the long way around and that there are no shortcuts. So you could take the shortcut and cross through Miss Evelyn's yard, but you know she got a pit bull. And he may or may not be in that yard. But you know for sure if you get in that yard and he is in that yard, you will definitely be chased. It is a bit safer to go around the long way because not only is it the right thing to do because you're not cutting through somebody's yard, their grass, trespassing on their property. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, but it's... What the fuck is this nigga talking about? Is he slow or is he freestyling the entire time? Listen, I know this nigga trying to throw some similes, some metaphors, some metaphors out here in these streets. But, yo, I am so confused to what this dude is saying on this platform. He talking about cutting through people's yards, trespassing, Jesus Christ, property taxes, real estate fees, cutting the grass. I don't know what this nigga talking about, bro. What the fuck is he talking about? You may have... And listen to how he talk. He literally making it up on the spot. Listen to him. Because you're not cutting through somebody's yard, their grass, trespassing on their property. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, but it's worth it. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, but it's worth it. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, the more this nigga talk, the more I hate this nigga face. <sighs> the more I, the more this nigga talk, the more I hate this nigga face, man. Seriously, bro. But it's worth the trip. So we're going to take the long way around and we're not going to call out these individuals on platforms like this. We're going to call them up. Now, please don't confuse. When Monique is standing on stage, she has an artistic paintbrush designed to paint her life and make people laugh in a way in which a comedian is supposed to do. So her life experiences are fair game. Mm. They're fair game. Fair game. So when she says what she says on stage, please don't say it's the way that she said it. <laughs> what about what she said on Club Shay Shay, my nigga? What about what she said on Instagram Live about D.L. Hughley's family? So when y'all, okay, listen to the hypocrisy of this for a second. 
Let's really slow it down. Listen to the hypocrisy of, our, of what this is being said. When Monique is talking on stage, she can basically say what the fuck she want to say. But when she goes on a radio show when they joking, it's easy for her to get offended and you can't say what the fuck you want to say because you got to do it the way that, that you wanted them to do it. <laughs> because she's on stage, we're dealing with when we're not on stage, what is being said? And again, to revisit Brother Stephen A., I'd like to point something out to you. I know Stephen A. is like, I don't even know this nigga. Like, if it wasn't for Monique, he wouldn't even be a, he wouldn't even be in my purview. Why do you keep talking to me? When you sit there and you say that a black woman looks bitter because she's telling her personal truth. When you sit no such thing as a personal truth. It's the truth. It's not your truth. It's not my truth. It's not your personal truth. It's not my personal truth. There is only the truth. That is the only thing that there is. I don't know why y'all keep trying to change words to me, which y'all wanted to mean. Ain't no yo truth, ain't no day truth. It's the truth, and that's it. That's the only thing that there is there and you speak in reference to the individuals that she spoke about you're not because you wanted to distinguish yourself from Shannon Sharp as being a general a journalist but you said you don't know what's happening you don't know what's going on and you don't care to know that right there is you sacrificing your journalistic integrity because it is your job to know when you make assertions about certain individuals and not form an opinion and you are supposed to ask the questions such as when she said what she said regarding Kevin Hart and David Becky as it re relates to him uh, reneging on what he promised and you ask the question, well, is there a reason, Monique, that he would do that? Hey, we done with this nigga or we done with this nigga? Y'all y'all about done? I just want to get a general sentiment in the chat that we, we could be done with this. That's all I want. That's all I want. Can we get a general idea in the chat? Can we be done with this and can we move on to the next subject or what? That's all I want to know. Because, you know, I'm, I'm an interactive person, so I want to make sure that we all on the same page. Is we done or is we is it over or is we done? Like Birdman said, nigga. Can we be, can we be done with this or shit, man? I don't want to sit. I'm not about to sit through 36 minutes of this. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you, Gwendolyn. You said you finally, you agree. Toxic. Toxic. Messy. Messy and toxic. Y'all been done? I'm done. I, it's over for me. I'm clipping this shit up all day long. Toxic. Let me get over out of this shit. Good God. Talk about one of the most narcissistic people that I've ever seen in my entire life. Y'all finish or y'all done? Corey in the house, 81. Is they finish or is they done? Good grief. That dude just can go. Shout out to the Pathfinders Journey says, this ain't got nothing to do with white folks. I know white people be sitting in the back like, why y'all always bringing me up? For all of my white people, for all of my white folks that's over there in the back that's sitting here having a conversation, I know y'all be thinking to yourself, why? we ain't even did nothing. Why we, what we got to do with this? Y'all just gonna include us in every single thing. It's a white thing. Y'all give y'all giving white people too much power. Show and tell says, yo, I've been trying to contact you for over a year. It's important, sir. About what? What are you talking about, show and tell? Send me an email, Anton Daniels, A-N-T-O-N, Daniels413 at gmail.com. And then I and I'm gonna check it out. If it's something crazy though, if it's something crazy though. Anel L.A. says, Anel La says, Monique, a real one. Her husband lost in the sauce, but she got to play her role and sit quiet. Y'all still think she a real one? Really? Really? You still going to ride that wave? I'm guessing that you're thinking Biden is a great president too, right? Come on, Anel. Come on, Anel. Stop. 
Stop it. Stop the cap. Let's get over to Shannon Sharp. I want to see what the final resolve is with this Mike Epps situation. Um, I heard he addressed it. So I want to I want to revisit this to make sure that I understand what's going on. Because I seen him go off on Mike Epps. And then I seen Mike Epps saying, yo, stop it. We're going to see each other over in, in, uh, in Indiana for the All-Star game. And so I want to make sure that we all on the same page. All right? Let me see if I can get this up here real quick. Uncle Shay Shay is on everybody's mind. Uncle Shay Shay is on everybody's mind. That's a fact. See if we can get Uncle Shay Shay up here. Uh, shout out to you, Spaces. Spaces says, bro, I hear cats and Harry Potter spells. Nick knack paddywhack, red fish, blue fish, knick knack paddywhack, give a dog a bone, spin around. Justice and freedom for all. Like, man, if this dude don't get his. <sighs> Let me see what he's talking about, man. Hello, it's your favorite sports song. Wait. Oh, yeah. Everybody want to. What happened? The, uh, uh, the Mike Epps situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, I heard what you said, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, I ain't letting you off uh, the hook. And I think the thing for me is that, like I said, what he said, what he said. And so we had a conversation, and he and I going to get together. Uh, because he's from and then he is guy gonna sit down and talk and oh y'all talked already yeah we were we were we were texting i mean dm we were dm no, we, were, man, we, were, no, we were dm and no, ocho no, uh, and okay now nah, i ain't, i ain't okay that's on y'all yeah. but we go, we're that's gonna we're gonna have he, a conversation i'm going to uh going to end it because i'm okay. coaching in the celebrity basketball game and so okay. we're gonna get together and i got upset right. about and he told a story Shannon Sharp did not DM me to come on the show. I DM'd him. He also mm -hmm. said, I wish Kat had said something about me. I'm jealous. Now, the pushback that I'm going to give, and when I, when I, you know, I'm there, Ocho, so I really never go back and watch the interview because I was there when it actually happened. Right. He said, right. I tried to get Kat to say something negative about him. I never tried mm -hmm. to get Kat... I didn't try to get Cat to say ne anything negative about anybody. And you know what? Let me give Shannon Sharp his flowers and let him let me give him his credit. Shannon Sharp is listen. Even though Club Shay Shay is turning into Club Messy, Shannon Sharp has been one of the the most um, transparent, best interviewers that I've ever had that I've ever seen especially coming from a space where it seems like he's never been an interviewer before, right? He don't have, you know, experience as a journalist per se. Um, but as an interviewer, I will say that Shannon Sharp is second to none, right? And the reason that that is is because Shannon does a really good job of asking questions and letting people say whatever it is that they want to say on the platform. And as a person that is interviewing people, that's what you have to do. People used to get mad at me, and I actually had to grow, right? I had to learn how to interview more appropriately from the first time that I ever did an interview all the way up until how I have conversations now. What people don't understand is that your job as an interviewee or the interviewer is to keep people talking and have, have them express their honest-to-God thoughts. It's not to challenge them. It's not to go back and forth with them, but it's to make sure that they get off whatever it is that they get off. Now, Shannon, he is absolutely correct. From what I seen from the interview, Shannon Sharp did not try to get did not try to get Cat Williams to talk negatively about Mike Epps. So I don't know where Mike Epps is getting at. I rock with Mike Epps. I think that he's a dope comedian. He actually opened up a very, very dope spot. He's putting $3 million into a comedy club here right here in downtown Detroit. Uh, right next to Greek Town, that is absolutely awesome. Um, it's called One Mike. It's dope. People be there. It's popping. And then you got Day Days next door. Detroit is lit. I don't know what y'all on, but Detroit is absolutely lit. So he did. He is opening up a new comedy club and a nice spot and all of that. And it be lit here in the city. And so I fuck with Mike Epps. He dope. But to be honest, I did not personally see Shannon Sharp at any point in that interview 
try to get Cat Williams to say anything negative about anybody. As a matter of fact, all Shannon Sharp do, looks like he do, is ask the questions that is given to him by, from the producer, but he don't necessarily try to get anybody to talk negatively about anybody. I think Mike Epps was capping on that. And he only did it because he was trying to save face. Let's just keep it real. The reason why a lot of the interviews take so long, Usher was only an hour because this team mm -hmm. that was talking says, look, he want to sit down with Unc. He loved the platform. He loves what Unc's doing for the community. Uh, for the community. He says he wants to sit down with him, but he only has an hour. No problem. Jonta, Brian, Mike, appreciate that. Usher team, thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy, so I appreciate that. But if you think about it, Ocho, the reason why my interviews yes, take a, a take at least normally two hours is because right. I ask the question, I sit back. That's what he do. Very seldom do I ever interrupt the guest because I he is one hundred percent correct. I you got to give Shannon Sharp his credit. He asked the question and then he let them do whatever it is that they want to do. I don't want them to lose their train of thought. Just go ahead and say, speak. I don't check. I'm Switzerland. I'm neutral. I don't agree. I don't disagree with what the person is saying. I want that's their truth. That's, I want the person. I want the people that's watching watching on YouTube or listening. However you get it, Apple or Spotify. I think. Is there any other way you can listen to it? Apple, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube podcast. So however you however you consume it, you get to make your decision. Shout out to Sunshine. Sunshine, I can't wait to see you this summer. You're going to have a ball. Hey, and we got the draft here in April. It's going to be lit. Oh, they're like, I mean, even DL. Oh, and he was like, he said mm -hmm. something when Mike, Mike Epps said what he said. Well, this is what you get for being messy. How? How am I messy? I ask a question. They answer the question. I don't like... Hey man, did he, did he do anything else? Did he say anything else? I asked the question, right. he answered. So we're going back and forth in the DM. He says, bro, let's just have fun with this. I said, F no. I say, tell me the fun with you lying on me, saying I'm gay, saying I cross dress and I look like Medea. Tell me where's the mm. fun for that for me. I Shannon is 100% right. It sounds like Mike Epps is cloud chasing. It sounds like Mike Epps is cloud chasing. And him saying, hey, let's just have fun with this is clout chasing. Because first of all, you lied. Second of all, you lied. Third of all, you lied. And then fourth of all, you said some crazy shit, which Shannon Sharp said that I ain't tripping off of none of that. But you can't say I said I, I did something when I didn't do it. That's the only thing that Shannon Sharp said. Now, I think that it did get a little bit messy in that they saying, listen, I'm going to see you and all of that shit. I don't believe in pulling up on people and doing all of that. You can use your platform for whatever it is it is you do. But I'm telling you that it looks like from all optics that Mike Epps was clout chasing and he was using Shannon Sharp in order to create more visibility for himself. Get it for you. You get the key, key, key. You get the laugh. But tell me the fun in it for me. What I'm starting to see, Ocho, nah. You remember Cat said it. He said, Shannon, he said, this is going to put you in a new realm. This is going to put you in a new yeah. stratosphere. He also mm -hmm. told me when I got outside, and Jory can attest to this, he said, they're going to come. He said, they're going to come. He <laughs> said, because the people that I said talked about, they have supporters. And they're going to come for you. I just want you to know. He says, I want you to be prepared. And he said, it's going to probably, some of them going to be people that you thought you were cool with. Yep. Mm. But that you thought they were cool with you, but they're cooler with the people that I said what I said about. So just be careful. What I'm starting to see is that in our community, anytime a black starts to get money, he had to have sold out the community to get it. Now, I want somebody in the mm. chat, and I want somebody to tell me how I sold out the community. Second of all, another time, anytime, a lot of times, not all, a black start to become a little successful, start to make a little paper, the first thing we say, oh, that end gay. He is 100% on point. He is 100% 
1,000% on point with no proof, no nothing. A, they're going to call you gay. And then B, when you get big enough, they're going to turn on you 100% of the time. Happens to every single person that has even a little bit of success. They're going to come for you. And I think that people are jealous of Shannon Sharp. I think that some people wish that they had did what he did. Some people wish that he wasn't as successful. Some people probably don't agree that he deserves to be there. I also think that it's a lot of people that's giving Shannon Sharp praise and, and props that actually is like a backhanded compliment. They really don't want him to be successful. They doing it because they have to, not necessarily because they really feel that way. I honestly believe that it's a lot of people, and this is where Shannon got to be a very, very careful, right? Because he's going to start to really be in certain circles and stratosphere around a bunch of snakes and around a bunch of people that don't want to see him win. It's a lot of people that just want to ride his coattails and they don't necessarily want to see him win. They, they wasn't checking for him. They wasn't really rocking with him. It wasn't really that big of a deal. But now that he didn't blew the fuck up, and I mean blew everybody out the water, instead of them just saying, yeah, fam, you did great or whatever, now everybody going to want to ride the wave. They're going to clout chase. They're going to be shaking his hand, but they're really going to be talking about him behind his back. Shannon just put himself, listen, he, he, got, too fucking, he got too fucking popular too fast in a space that he wasn't supposed to win in. That people was betting against them in. And when they wanted the spotlight, even if they rocking with him, even if they work with him, I think that it's a lot of people that want his spot. They want to be top dog. Even if they making a lot of money already, even if they already successful, it's always going to be a competition amongst people that want your fucking spot. They can't just be happy for you. And so now, the problem now is for Shannon is that... <clears throat> People are now starting to pick sides. They're not looking at him and saying, yeah, Shannon is dope or he got a dope platform that you need to go on. They're going to say, oh, no, you was fucking with Kat, so I don't fuck with you now. And everything, and every single thing that you do, it starts to become politics, especially when you start to become successful. You ain't even got to make no money. All you got to do is start getting a little bit of movement. And people are going to start hating on you. Oh, he think he the shit now, huh? Oh, you messing with the ops now. First, it was just the interview. Now you picking sides every time. He's Because a, they mm, were, right. and, and, and like what they try to do is call in the question because you know in our community, even though they say somebody might say it, it's still kind of frowned upon. And it's, it's the crabs in the it's the crabs in the barrel mentality, official young goal 75. Frowned upon in a lot of right, communities, right. but I don't know if it's treated right. as harsh other than the mute Muslim community than in the black yeah. community. But you know what? Even even today, even today, calling somebody gay, it really holds no weight. Ocho. It, it, it holds no Ocho. weight today. It holds no Ocho. weight. They got rules, they got they got they got places that listen, they set a a standard for them. AR said, why would Mike be for Shannon? Because he want the clout. Didn't you hear what he just said? He said that uh, Mike Epps just DM'd him again and said, hey, let's just have fun with this. And he was like, how's that fun for me? By you calling me ad hominem attacks and lying. To where at this point, hey, you gay. Okay, and next. But that's, that's not even an answer. But here's the thing, Ocho. People, people will say, if you repeat something enough, why people you think start to believe give it. misinformation? Yep. If I keep repeating, people will start to believe it's true. Because Facts. That's a fact. Every single time. People be saying shit all the time. I be hearing shit like, how you get that information? What, when, when did that happen? Where's the paperwork? Whoever produced that? People just say shit. A lot of people believe repetitions of a lie will make it true. Yep. So he kept, if he had just said it once, but he kept repeating it. Knowing. Right. Me? And I get it. My style is Hollywood. He was gay. Okay, that's his life. That's not mine. Mm -hmm. Hollywood and I, Hollywood no longer styles me. Why? Because I'm loyal to Shelly. She was hurt that after 20 plus years of being my stylist, mm -hmm. that I had gone outside to hire someone else. And someone else right. was getting the credit when she was there at CBS. She was there when mm -hmm. I started at Fox. She was there when I was going out and doing red carpet events and I never had a problem. And for me, in my head, I thought I needed someone outside. Right. I didn't buy one thing new when Hollywood started styling me. Everything, all those LB jackets, 
all that stuff that I, I already had it. And a lot of the stuff she had already put together, but I took it apart. Mm. So when he put it back together, it was just what she had put together. And I told him, I said, Hollywood, I said, bro, I think you did an unbelievable job. I said, but I'm going to go back to Shelly. Uh, let me just say this, man. I don't believe in discrimination. I believe in, in, in uh because I work with gay people, right? It's, it's gay people that work for me in corporate America specifically. Um, I don't want no sassy man styling me. That's just flat out, bro. I don't. I'd rather just get a girl before I get a man, personally. And that don't mean that he can't do it, and that don't mean that y'all can't do it when y'all get y'all fame and y'all money and all of that. I don't want no sassy man telling me what it is that I should and shouldn't wear. I'm good. Uh, that's just me personally. I'm not into it. I don't want that. I don't even want that type of energy around me. We do it in corporate America, and I don't discriminate, and I'm with that as far as your humanity and stuff. But I'm just, I, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm straight. I'm good all day long. Cause mm. it's hurting her because she had been through when, and I, anybody that knows me know I'm loyal. My team is my team. I'm loyal, loyal. And I and she and it hurt her, and she gonna ride for me. Shelly is the closest. Shelly is close to me like my family. Right. She handles everything. All the emails. If you want to get in touch with Shannon, quick, call Shelly. So and I get it. Well, you hanging around with a gay guy, and see, here's the thing, Ocho. I agree. If I swerve, I if I'm driving my car and I swerve, what's the first thing somebody mm -hmm. automatically assumes? He drunk. What if right. I was on my phone? What if I dropped something? You see how you make assumptions? But that's what we do in our community. Not man, Shannon doing good, man. You see, he lost his job. He working so hard. Man, look at it. But no, 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 no. He got the ain't no way that man will sin like that without selling out his community. But still, nobody's told me right. how I sold out my community. You ain't sold out. Nobody Listen, you ain't sold out. It's just going to be a bunch of haters that don't want to see you win or they had a ceiling that they wanted you to hit, but you exceeded that. And so now it bothers them. Now it bothers them. And and no, you're wrong, Elon. You're wrong, Elon, in the chat. You're absolutely wrong. And y'all just be saying stuff. Y'all just say wild shit on a regular basis. And sometimes I think that y'all say that because that is y'all. I think it'd be more of a reflection of the people that say it than the people that they saying it against. Backpack Grizzly says, Anton, you got to be careful with the alphabet community, especially with your corporate job. Got to be easy what you say, bro. Don't mess up that corporate bag, especially with that insurance. I ain't say nothing. I say what I said. I believe that people should have the right to be able to work for and earn whatever it is that they earn. I, I work with some gay people. Um... But it don't mean that they're not good at their job. I think that they're great at their job. And I love what it is that we do. They don't lead with that on the job. The only reason I know about it is because of conversations that we've had outside of the job. Um, because we network with each other in real life. And so that's cool. I don't care. People can listen. I believe in American values. I believe that you should have the freedom to do whatever it, is, whatever it is that you want to do when you want to do it. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Will I have one styling me, working for me personally in my business? No, I do not want a gay stylist. I don't have to be careful with that. I think that people should, should be able to do what they want to do in their own personal time. Just don't lead with it on the job. Because what your sexuality is has nothing to do with whether or not you're going to get that project management done. Or whether you're a great project manager. That ain't got shit to do with what we're doing on this job. You can do what you want to do in your own personal time. I'm going to worship my God. You can worship your God. You can have your sexuality. I'm going to do what it is that I'm doing. I'm going to be nice and married and Christian. And so I'm cool with that. The thing that I'm saying is that for my business, if I need a stylist, I don't want a gay man styling me. I don't really understand why, wh wh where that's an issue. Do your job. I'm going to do my job. And then we can keep it moving. You're going to go home. I'm going to go home. And we're going to live our own personal lives. I believe in that. As a conservative, I believe in freedom of, of, of choice 
and freedom of speech. But it, like, okay, where's your proof? So, and I said, Mike, you tell me the fun in it for me that you can lie on my name. <laughs> I said, and guys out there, if I said your wife has been flushed more than a stadium bathroom, you gonna be cool with that? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Hell no, nah, you not. If I if I say things about you, if you got a child that's slow, and I made jokes about that, you okay with that? No. So why should I be okay? It's just jokes. And I told him this. I said, what I'm starting to see is that jealousy, hate, and envy is being disguised in I jokes. I told you. I told you. Yep. Mm. I said, that's what I'm seeing. Oh, it's just a joke. He a comedian. I ain't never hear him call nobody else that. I ain't never hear him say anything else about that. I ain't hear him lie on nobody else's name. Why me? I met Mike in Whole Foods over a decade ago. We had a conversation in Whole Foods about 10 minutes. We exchanged information. The next time I heard from Mike Epp, he had DM'd me, DM'd me about coming on Club Shay Shay. That was it. So, and people say, well, Shannon's just, bro, where, I mean, to get tagged with that, and I ain't got no problem with gay. I just, I'm just not gay. Yeah. And I've had you, all, you, I, a lot of my exes reached out. They was like, Shannon, where does gay is coming from? They need to talk. But see, that's the thing. It's all jealousy. It's all hate and jealousy disguised as jokes. He had it correct. He had it absolutely positively accurate. He, it's all hate and jealousy disguised as jokes. I have never, ever personally, ever at any point in my life, ever seen Sh Shannon Sharp on a on a show or something like that. I said, man, Shannon got to be gay. I ain't, that ain't never, ever fucking crossed my mind. That's almost like, listen, that's the thing that people throw at you when they ain't got nothing else to throw at you. When they can't substantiate their argument, when they can't prove you wrong, they start to insult your character. They start to accuse you of things that they know they ain't got no proof of and that's not true. It's all jealousy, in my opinion. What do you get out of calling me gay? You feel good? That makes you feel good? Because you're saying things to on the radio behind your screen that you would never say to my face. What's the likelihood that Mike Epps would have said what he said to my face? Or any of these comedians that said what they said, they're not going to say that to my face, Ocho. You know that, I know that. Yeah. Now, when I said I was mm -hmm. going to pull up, I was going to see him. He and I was going to have a conversation. Yeah. And I'm going to say, okay, where did you get this from? Where are you hearing this from? No, nah, that's no, nah, we that's not the kind of pulling up we were doing, man. No, why I'm gonna put my hands on him and mess up my money? Hey, wait a minute, I talk to him, Shannon. Don't fuck up the bag. As a matter of fact, listen, I think that Shannon is doing too much by even having a conversation with somebody in person. Fuck him. I ain't gotta even talk to you. I'm here to coach the game and have a good time. We do not have to be in the same spot at the same time, and I gotta see you. I don't even want to know what you're thinking. It ain't even that deep to me. I don't give a fuck enough to even have a conversation with you. I'm on the other side. I already know what you want. When it got some black Air Force Ones and some Army fatigue, I was ready to come to go to Indy. Nah, and, and that's the I, thing. Nah, nah, look. Chad just be talking shit. He be joking, y'all. There's this one guy. He wants to come on my show, but I don't have any respect for him. And I don't think he's funny. Yeah. Who that? And so I don't, I don't really pay any attention to him. And he keeps it going. Who that? He, he, who that? The, the chat knows who he is. But and that's the, and chat, that's the, that? I, I was, I was lost that's yesterday. The thing, I don't want to be lost today. And so I said, I said, Mike, we just need to have a conversation. And hopefully, once we have this conversation, this thing goes to bed. I said because at the end of the right. day, I'm a man, but I'm also a son. Mm. I'm a brother. I'm a dad, and I'm a granddad. And when my kid starts reaching out, okay, now we got a problem. You just saying what mm. you saying. My daughter hit me up. Dad, where is this coming from? Now I got a problem because you got people involved. If it was just me and you, I got a grand. Right. Now my grand gonna have to hear this. So I just need to, I just need I just need to know what's really going on and why you feel that way yeah. and why you feel and why you felt the need to say Oh, that. he talking about Corey Holcomb? Is that who he talking about? He talking about Corey Holcomb? No, nah, he mentioned DL. When he addressed DL Hughley, he addressed DL. He talking about Corey Holcomb. Oh, uh, okay.
okay, okay. As I was lost myself, I didn't know who he was talking about. Because Shannon Sharp is, is, is hot as hell right now. Every single person got something to say literally about or a comment about what's happening on Shannon Sharp's podcast. I mean, it just come with the game. He hot um, on the podcast circuit as a content creator, and so everybody's saying it. I didn't know he was talking about Corey Holcomb. Oh, I see, I see. You say it as far as I reached out to you. Now, you, everybody heard him say, I'm jealous. Shout Can't out to Dark Eight. my name. Shout out to Dark Eighties, man. We might have to we we might have to visit that whole subject on Thursday because you know Thursdays is mine now, right? I know Thursdays is mine now, right? We might have to revisit that on Thursday, but we gonna get there. But then you turn around and say, "Well, Shannon tried to get Cat to go in on me, but he wouldn't." Did anybody hear me mention anything about Mike other than I think I might have said I don't know. Like I said, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I said Mike was great in that role. Nobody else could have played Day Day. I didn't try. I don't right. try to get my guests to go anywhere. Right. But I, I yes. have a question. What 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 you have to understand for me, which is what I'm what I'm what I'm really good at, is obviously knowing all the comedians and understanding comedy in itself. Is how when when they I take anything that they do say with a grain of salt. Agreed, Ezekiel. I agree with you, bro. You know, because comedy Ocho, is you're not going Ocho, you're not going to take what they're saying about me with a grain of salt. Stop it, Ocho. What is joke Wait to man, you I, is death to someone else. Everybody don't play know, like I'm, they play. Okay, I I, I know it's okay. You're right. You're right. But me as hilarious, so, funny. So you know, if, he my say, if he say if he say a rail getting smashed by fifteen dudes, mm -hmm. you cool with that? Mm -hmm. But no, 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 it holds okay. no weight. You say that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, listen, stay with me now. It just, it, it holds no weight. What you saying? It holds no weight in this. And there's no, no, no fact in it. Thank comedy, you. Thank comedy you. Hold on. It's, it's no what? Let me finish. No Ocho, weight, no weight in that. Ocho, no I know weight. you. You're not going to let somebody yeah. talk about rail. You're not going to let somebody talk about your kids constantly. Lie on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I understand where you're going. I, I, I stay with me, baby. I understand where you're going, but there's no need to get up in arms about certain things that hold no weight and hold no oh, true oh, Joe, value. Do you know how? Oh, oh, somebody so. say, if that's the case, you, 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 let's stay, stay with me. Every time somebody say something, you can be ready to no. argue or ready to ready to argue. Oh, you, don't, you don't have to fight oh, every Joe. fight. Some some fights are not even worth listening to or oh, Joe. or paying Our attention community to. is easily misled. That's why we're in the situation that we're in. We're not going to ever get yeah, out because why? Can I, ask, sure. can I ask you a question? Who cut your checks? Who in the community cut your checks? The people that support us. What can anybody in our... Wait, stay with me. Who in, who in our community can say anything about you that's going to affect your bottom line at the end of the day and you no, paying your Ocho, bills? It's the people in the community that support us. We have a heavy right. African demographic that follow us. Whites too. We got a heavy uh, 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 female, a uh, women that they're follow gonna us. Always, they're gonna always support us, Uncle. They the support's not gonna stop because of what somebody Ocho. says. Ocho, That's not gonna it, stop see, nothing. Here's the thing: the joke is always funny as long as it's not about you. That's true. And you see, you and I, we joke, but you and I have a personal relationship. Right. And we know we keep it above the board. Right. That's all I'm saying. I don't think right. I'm asking too much for somebody not to right. call me out of my name. I don't think I'm asking okay. for too much for someone not to lie on me. Is that asking too much, mm -hmm. chat? I, I agree with Shannon 100% um, unequivocally. I don't think that, and you know me, I'm going to call a spade a spade 100% of the time. And if I disagree with it, then I'm just going to say I disagree with it. But I 100% I, I agree with what Shannon Sharp is saying right now. He's 100% right. And at certain lines, even if you're a comedian, that people keep saying that you just don't fucking cross. And just because you, put, you label yourself or you put comedian in the front of your name does not mean that you get a pass to just say some egregious shit. That's just me personally. So I'm 100% in agreement with what Shannon Sharp is saying right now. And uh, I think that he's right. I think he's 100% right. Uh, I emailed you a few times. I'll do it again. I was in a bag chasers. I was a bag chaser. I got you, though. Shout out to Show and Tell. 
I'm going to check that email tomorrow. Food Fashion Women in Sports says, Monique and Unk giving me New Jersey drive vibes. I think that Shannon Sharp is right. Enos Luby says, Monique's son dropped his side of the story. Messy, I'm late. Uh, I don't know if you mind that out already. I did. I did, I did, I did. Y'all got to jump into this. Y'all know I'll be going live on um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and most of the time Saturdays, unless I go live on Fridays. Show and Tell says, doing it again. My name is DJ Speedy. All right, I got you. I see you. Dark 80s man in the building says, we all know uh, M.E. want some smoke. Mike Epps don't want no smoke when on Shannon Sharp. Says, remember Mike Epps said, say my name, I want some smoke. He just sound like he just wants some clout. Morning Drive Coffee Break says, same people who support DJ Vlad are now taking down on, talking down on Shannon Sharp. D.L. Hughley comes to mind, a bunch of jealous Negroes shaking my head. I never really care for D.L. Hughley, but I do think that he's right with, with regard to Monique. Messy Mathematician says Shannon didn't, didn't even have to respond to this. No, I think he handled it correctly. I just don't even think, I don't think that he needs to respond to him in person because you can't pull up to and talk about every single person that talks about you. Sometimes, sometimes it's not worth it to even engage because it has the possibility of going further than we really want it to go. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, final thing that I want to address tonight is, is some chicks that's on a podcast or a platform called Poor Minds, and it's another chick named Talitha Troop or Trope. Talitha Trope or Troop, okay? And basically what they're saying is, now the Talitha chick is in the middle. Talitha chick is in the middle. And thank y'all for the super chats supporting the platform. But basically what they were saying was, don't date a man under $50,000. I had to bring this to the front of the congregation. And uh, shout out to Poor Minds on the platform. I got to give shout out to the platforms that do great shit. Um, I had to bring this to the front of the congregation because this shit was just too egregious. It was just too egregious and I felt like it was more to it that I didn't get to review. So I'm definitely going to go through this. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. I'm going to fast forward it to the part where they was talking about it. Because they was talking about a bunch of crazy shit. But I'm not going through this whole hour and 50 minutes. I want to get down to like the 40-something minute. 43 or 42. More than to go sit in Chanel with their little drink. Their little champagne. Post a bitch a boomerang. <laughs> yes, they love a little no, boomerang. boomerang. You're strategic in what you do, sis. You're not just out here like, oh, let's go to Chanel. You're like, hey, listen, as much as I would love that $12,000 Chanel bag, I have been saving up for a property because I really want to take my hair brand to the next level mm -hmm. and, and speak to it. I've looked at this location, this location, and this location, and I really want this one, but they want this much down on the property, and I don't have that much yet, right. especially if I want to put chairs in it and design it and decorate it. That man is like, well, okay, baby, let me go ahead and reach uh, this one. How much you need for the check? Because right. women don't talk that hot shit. Yeah. They talk hot girl shit, right. and there's a difference. And I think a lot of women definitely be missing that. Like, if you ask a man to invest in you, and you should want a man to invest in you to where he's helping you make more money because... Yeah. Even if the relationship don't work out, now you set up. Now you straight, yeah. and you can make your own money. You Absolutely. can go buy yourself a few more... Here's, here's, here's the thing that I'm really trying to figure out. Who in the fuck is buying women random ass Chanel bags, except for athletes that's going to be broke two to three years after they lead a league? Dog, I don't know if y'all really understand the levels to this shit, but let me tell you something. Chanel bags regularly run above 10 bands, depending on what, band, what bag you get. Let me say it again for the, for the people in the back. Chanel bags. I don't know if y'all know. Here, let me show it to you. Let's go, let's go into it. Let's just go ahead and just deep dive into it. Because I just need y'all to understand the context behind how these chicks be talking. They be talking some crazy shit, in my opinion. Who, what guys is out here just randomly giving y'all hosts in the Chanel bags? What the fuck is happening out here in these streets? Um, 
handbags. I want y'all to understand how, how expensive this shit is, all right? Now, remember, I'm not no regular nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, let's go to evening bags. Good evening. Look at this shit. This is price upon request. You got to contact an advisor to even be able to get some shit like this. Real talk. The star handbag is 50. This little piece of shit is $5,400. All right. Let's go to something slightly bigger. Let's go to this one, the mini evening bag. You can't even get a price online for this shit. A clutch. Price upon request. I can't even get a price for none of this stuff, bro. Let's go to a little clutch. $5,700 for the little clutch. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I can get a... Uh, um... Hobo bags. Let's go with the hobo, with the large hobo bag. Fifty-eight hundred dollars. Fifty-five hundred dollars. Sixty-three hundred dollars. Who the fuck just giving y'all random ass hoes? Okay, let me refine that. Who the fuck is just giving y'all? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar bags. What are y'all talking about? Don't y'all know that it's inflation out here and motherfuckers is trying to pay their rent? Who are giving how many, how many of y'all look at these women? Look at these women on this podcast. Just look at them. Who the fuck are giving them handbags? I am so confused. You want a man to invest in you, and then that way, if the relationship don't work, you can go ahead and go that. What are y'all talking about? It looked like they got lip injections. It looked like they got injections into their cheeks, man. Chanel bag. Yeah. A nigga buy you a Chanel bag, and then that's it. Now what you, you selling a Chanel bag. Now you in the... Girl, hey. now you on the real real I'm trying right, to get rid of the damn bag. Poshmark. <laughs> Hello. Look, I you, get mine. You, a, <laughs> you a Poshmark princess. <laughs> right. Like anybody Poshmark want this bag? This is crazy. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, so talk about um, because we do have male listeners as well. Right. So talk about what dating would look like for, you know, a guy who's maybe look at and and again, I don't know. I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to understand it. Look at their cheeks. Look at their 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 bones and their like that's that shit don't look normal to me. And I know that everybody in Atlanta got work done because they think that they're Kardashian, but none of this shit looks real to me. These people don't look like normal human beings. You know how women used to look? They used to just look like they used to just look like normal women. You know what I'm saying? They used to look like like Monica and Maya and Brandy and Aaliyah and stuff. Now everybody looks like look like a Harakuju doll or something. They look like a blow-up doll. It looks unreal. It doesn't look real. Everybody look crazy. Everybody look crazy. And I don't know what y'all doing or what doctors y'all going to. But stop. Stop. Y'all look insane to me. Be making just like a hundred thousand a year, you know, mm -hmm. and he wants he's a high value man mm -hmm. in every aspect of it. He's mm -hmm. a good guy, but maybe he doesn't have the income to be, you know, yeah. giving ten thousand yeah. dollars to a woman yeah. to, you know, invest in her business. Absolutely. So, what does dating look like for like the average? And a hundred thousand is not even the average person, let's, it's right. Right. let's, yeah. let's keep it so real. Let's, yeah. let's keep it real for the average person who is mm -hmm. making fifty thousand dollars. That's mm -hmm. a good person. What does dating look like for them? So, if you're making fifty thousand dollars, don't date. Look at who the fuck is saying this, bro. Look at who's saying this. 
I'm I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. When you're, you're not right. ready to date. And you're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park, but eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. <laughs> she this thirsty. bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Let's oh, not play. Please. So if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And, and now you got expendable cash. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm not saying you got to pay to play to be with a woman. I'm simply saying courtship costs. Right. It is not free it's to nice. date. This is some Atlanta shit, bro. This is some Houston, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas shit. Most people are broke, bro. And when I say broke, I'm not saying like broke on some like you, you don't have the ability to pay your bills type, bro. I'm saying, like, trying to figure out how we going to pay for our daughter's top college tuition type of broke shit. Trying to figure out whether or not we got enough money in our 401k and if we going to make it as far as making sure we fund both of our 401ks or if we need to make sure that we fund our Roth IRAs. You know what I'm saying? Like normal people plan for family trips. Normal people trying to make sure that they got insurance so that their pregnancy goes well. Normal people is, are, are, are budgeting their money and they doing it effectively. I know people that make $100,000 a year that are responsible with their money that don't fucking have the type of money that these women be talking about as far as in this dating market shit. Let me also say this. Y'all taking advice from people that are not successfully married. De when you get in a relationship, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. You can have a business perspective. You can make sure that you're doing things the right way. You can be very, very intentional with, with, with your, you know, with how you're moving. Marriage is for people that don't even have a whole lot of resources so that they can combine their resources and limit their expenses. It's like having a merger. When you see companies merge, okay, usually, usually they, they, they use a key word and it's called synergies. And synergies mean that they need to go through and cut your fucking job out, cut your fucking job out, and cut your fucking job out because we absorb the same customer base or we absorb more customers, but we doing, we doing duplicates, right, where, where we have redundancies, meaning that you doing the same thing that he doing, but he ain't even spending eight hours doing it. He could do your fucking job. And so now that we merge the company, we can eliminate the, some of the jobs that we don't need, increase the revenue, and make way more money as a result of it. And that's what happens when you're married. When you're married, what's supposed to happen is, and we got it so fucking backwards as a culture, listening to these people in Atlanta. <clears throat> when you get married, and you get into a, 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 a relationship with somebody that's equally yoked as you. What you do is you create synergies and you eliminate redundancies. So one of the redundancies could be you got a place over here. They got a place over there. Y'all both paying the same amount in rent, but y'all can live together, save the money and continue to build with each other. You scratch my back because I can't reach it. I can scratch your back because you can't reach it. And so as a result, if we both got each other back and we and, and we both facing each other, we don't have any kind of blind spots because my back is against your back. And then you looking this way and I'm looking this way. And so we move it in sync and we ensuring that each other is being successful because we both have each other's best interests at heart. That's what marriage is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be, oh, you getting a retirement plan or you got to spend this amount of money on me. It's supposed to be. What are your strengths? These are my strengths. What are your weaknesses? These are my weaknesses. But then we both have the same mindset. How can we improve and make sure that we both getting what we want out of this situation while at the same time taking advantage of the fact that we got in-house pussy and in-house dick if you really want to just get down to it? We both got the same mindset. We going in the same direction. And so you got my back, I got your back, and so we both making sure that we ain't got no blind spots. Let's run this shit up and let's be successful. It's not about this dumb shit that y'all keep hearing people saying on these platforms that don't even know what they talking about.
like some of us can't even take our homegirl out and be and it's free. <laughs> That's you right. know what I'm yeah. saying? You 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 peeling off a little check for shorty mm -hmm. drink. So it's like, why do we expect anything else of women with a man? Like, fellas, if you're broke, don't date. You're not ready to date yet. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's gonna date you when you have no money. A bottom, listen, listen to what they saying to y'all. Listen how they refer to each other. Now, we supposed to respect y'all and we supposed to love y'all and we supposed to pedestalize y'all and look at y'all as the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? But they calling each other bottom of the barrel bitches. A woman that'll hold a man down and then, then they get mad at white women because white women is rocking with dudes when they is on they come up or they trying to figure it out. And they calling each other bottom of the barrel bitches because you choose to actually hold a man down that has your best interest at heart that ultimately is going to be the one that you benefit from the most. How can we respect you when you don't even respect yourself? Bottom of the barrel, bitches. That's what I was about to ask. Do she think... doesn't want anything. From These you. are straight up niggas that's on this podcast, bro. Right. You. If she doesn't have the expectation, and I'm going to tell you this right now, enjoy it while it lasts because eventually you're going to want to run because she doesn't stretch you. She doesn't make you the man that you need to become in mm -hmm. order to thrive in this world. Right. She doesn't set expectations for you. She allows you to be the stagnant dude in the same jeans for three days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Same and, jeans and is wild. You be cutting up. I'm you just talk about me. You be well, cutting I'm up. I'm cut up cocaine. <laughs> That's, um, look, you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> they say they be tripping when they wear the same jeans for three days. They be working hooking. hard. Listen, I don't want that either. Like, I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I've dated drug dealers in my past, and that's cute and everything same. when you're in your 20s. Yeah, I'm 35 you know, years old. Right. Translation. Niggas fucked her. Niggas did whatever it is that they wanted to do to her and with her. And so now she's 35 years old. And so you niggas that's over here with the good jobs... And the good health care and the benefits and that is winning in life and creating your own companies and becoming CEOs. Y'all niggas is supposed to pick up from behind the niggas that was dealing dope to the community and fucking on these hoes and giving them a couple dollars to go shopping as a result of it. Man, the black community is fucked up. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad out here in these streets. It's bad out here in these streets. Walk away, fellas. Get on out of there. Pew, pew, pew. Pound, 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 dope, dope boy, dope boy, yeah, that's me. The dope nigga fucked you, and so now you 35, yeah, dog. And they be saying that shit like it's a badge of honor, like because you know the game. I can only watch so much of this type of shit. So I'm going well, to play a little bit more and we're going to see if we can source anything else out of this, ladies and gentlemen. I am not dating no damn drug dealer. Don't know mm -hmm. who's going to run up in my door. Don't know who's what's going to happen in the streets when we out together. You can't protect me. It doesn't matter how much protection you have on you. Yeah. Right? You can't protect me if that's what you're doing and that's your motive and that's, that's how you get your money. Yo, darling Nikki. Darling Nikki, I know. I know, baby. I know, baby. The same way that it ain't at all guys ain't a certain type of way. But we got to use these people as an example because this is the stuff that's being championed and celebrated and going viral in the community. And people think this shit is normal. And so it's not to say that all women are like this. But the things that we celebrate from a cultural perspective is trash. And we need to call out trash when we see it. You know I love you. You know I love you, girl. Yeah. And let's be honest, I don't really know many rich drug dealers because they live that life. They're right. spending it as yep. fast as it's coming. You shouldn't thing. even know no drug dealers. Spending it. And so you might come up on a little a little come up and a man that's like, hey, baby, here's 20 bands. And if you're smart with it, mm -hmm. you'll go do with it what you, what you know you need to do. Right. Here's 20 bands. Okay. When you're with a hustler, you don't. <laughs> 
Because the money keeps rolling keep, in. You're yeah. trying to keep up with the Joneses. You, yeah. He take you out. His homies all got girls in Chanel and, and Balenciagas and whatever. Mm. And you're like, damn, I need to go get that. And so you go take your little money and you go shopping to put a, make you a little boomerang. Mm-hmm. And now your bank account is suffering until he gives you another chunk. Right. So- How about you broke hoes going to get a fucking job for yourself? Why are y'all so independent, but then interdependent on a drug dealer or a nigga giving you some money because your bank account is on on E? Ugh. Ugh. Nah, that's why I be telling y'all, don't date these broke hoes, man. Now your bank account on E. What do you do for a living? <sighs> they gaslighting trying to bait a scent for real. Facts. Morning Drive Coffee says, and a majority of these black women buy these bags only have $100 and a $5,000 bag as a fact or a bunch of credit card debt to go inside of it. In all fairness, KS says similar things about men not dating if you're broke. No, 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 no. That's not what KS said. KS was an advocate for holding men accountable for continuing to push themselves to be great and be successful. KS was an advocate for people getting married And he wanted people to be realistic about what their standards were because people had these outsized expectations when they did not meet the criteria. And so just because he pushed you to be greater does not mean that he advocated against you actually getting married and doing the thing that's in your best interest. Morning Drive Coffee Break says, I can't imagine anyone wifing up the Michelin man. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, and red. She don't need a Chanel bag. She need a brown paper bag to put over her head. Shout out to Morning Coffee Break. My dog, Executive Suite Emily says, we don't want those women, Anton. They have nothing to worry about. They are washed up and ran through. The men they say they don't want, they want, don't want them. Fuck out of here. And that's a fact. Jawan Hart says, this chick built like a straight NFL linebacker. Agreed. Agreed. I don't even know what these women talk about, bro. I'm so off of this shit. Listen, another dope show, another great platform for us to continue to communicate on. I love you. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all ready for the Millionaire Morning Show. Uh, Yeah, man, we're going to get to it. We're going to run it up, and I'm absolutely excited about continuing to pour into y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Hopefully, over the next month or two, you see this, this space completely transform with some of the dopest tables that I've ever ordered. And all of this good stuff that's going to be permeating throughout here. And hopefully I can find somebody to come up in here to hang my TVs and come and get this money that I got from them. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for Afnol Blunt Samurai. That's over. Listen, go tell one of them other people to go and do that shit. We not doing none of them fucked up ass panels no more. We only rock with dope people. And the only panel that I'm rocking on is the one that's on Monday night on the Anton Daniels channel, all right? Because that one actually has good conversation, entertainment, and dope people. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all go get some rest. My dog, AL, is in the building. AL says, what's good, Anton? On my grind, peace and blessings to you. Why are we listening to these chicks? So we can make examples of them. Shout out to my dog, AL. I appreciate y'all. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm getting some rest. I got to get up early in the morning. We back at it. We don't miss. We don't miss. I love y'all. Get some rest. After hours. See y'all tomorrow morning. Peace.